Museums and history books teach us about the past in an effort to prevent history from repeating itself. And Harder recently sat down with the executive director of the Holocaust Center of Pittsburgh to see what they are doing. Holocaust museums keep the history of that dark period before us, so history never repeats itself. They also spark engagement with the history of that time, connecting the Holocaust to injustices of today. Dr. Lauren Apter Barron's father is director of the Holocaust Center of Pittsburgh. She's been in Central Texas to speak to Baylor Law School students and history students. Now, a year ago, the mass shooting at the Tree of Life in Pittsburgh was an act of domestic terrorism, and you're you're talking and kind of reminiscing about that right. horrific happening, yes. but what have we learned since then? I mean, unfortunately, we have learned how large this threat is and that it's not only a threat to Jewish communities, but is a threat to Muslim communities, some Christian communities, other minorities. The threats seem to be overwhelming at times, but we have learned about how a community can respond and the law enforcement community has also learned a lot about tracking movements of people who pose a threat. And is also brought to mind, you know, if you see something, say something. In uh, this situation, um, he was very active on social media. Indeed he was, and he broadcast his intentions. Now, he was part of a so, uh, an online community that was kind of under the radar. I guess law enforcement was familiar with it, but like-minded individuals gathered there, and he had a place where he could find support for his really fringe ideas. And that's another thing that's important to remember, is that you know the people who perpetrate these crimes, they can find a community, but they really are on the fringes. That gives me hope that there's a space where we can get involved with educational activities and make a difference, You know, stop these things before they start through education. Well, let's talk a little bit about the center in Pittsburgh and yes. your work there. What kind of brought you there? Well, so I'm from that area. I've spent a lot of my life in Central Texas, so being back here is really like being home again. But I grew up outside of Pittsburgh, and I always say I got to Texas as fast as I could. <laughs> but I moved home about four years ago. This job was available. I had worked in Holocaust and memory for years, was part of my graduate studies. So um, the job was available, and I felt like it was meant to be. Now, I mean, at that time, did I ever think there would be something like this horrific event at the Tree of Life building? Absolutely not. Still, we felt that what we do is relevant and important, you know, teaching students about the Holocaust so that we can understand things that happen now, not just for the sake of knowing about the Holocaust, although we also think that's important. Um, it teaches us so many things about how to live in the world now. So um, I took the position with a lot of enthusiasm, never realizing that Holocaust education would suddenly become front and center and so important as we respond to you know, the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in the history of our country. Now you've opened an exhibit there. Um, it, you, you have a gallery so people can see the mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what's so crucial, that, that right. people understand this kind, of, this kind of hate does exist. That's right, and the other piece of this, and especially in the world of Holocaust remembrance and education, we still have Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. you know, and we have a, a vibrant community of survivors in Pittsburgh, even it's 40 some people. They're active, some of them will still speak to school groups. So while we can do that, you know, that, that is a direct connection. These are the witnesses. They survived, you know, they, they survived this attempt to kill them. So they know, I mean, when, even when this horrible thing happened in Pittsburgh, I got phone calls, people wanted to know, are the survivors okay? Yeah. The survivors were better than anyone else. I mean, they are the people who gave us hope after this thing happened because they know how to survive and build their lives after. Well, we thank you so much for your time and for your work and what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.